Hello and welcome to Region Weather Live, your online YouTube source for weather across the Dakotas and Minnesota. I am meteorologist Brad Warner and thanks once again for everybody for subscribing over the last number of days. It's been so, so awesome and that is a big thanks to you guys out there uh, hitting the like button, the thumbs up button, subscribing to my channel and just getting this thing found more and more and more and more. So Thank you very much. I do appreciate it so much. So uh, we've had a quiet couple of days where there was some severe weather uh, out in eastern parts of Minnesota yesterday and then a few today as well. Uh, but overall been a fairly quiet pattern. Uh, you can see some storms right now uh, firing up into uh, Min or Montana. And we've got a pretty decent ridge uh, settling in over there and uh, some northwesterly winds setting up uh, across our region. Now, we do have a strong southerly low-level jet setting up uh, through the overnight hours. So it's possible as these move eastward that uh, some of these storms could maintain through the overnight hours. Now, they're not expected to be all that strong. I mean, there are some strong southerly low-level winds. Uh, however, there's not a whole lot of humidity in place just yet. So uh, as those winds kind of track eastward through the overnight and early parts of Wednesday morning. And here we can see those storms through Tuesday night into Wednesday morning as they kind of move eastward across, mainly North Dakota, possibly in the northern parts of South Dakota uh, by 6 a.m., uh, by around 8 or 9 a.m., they start to get into northern parts of Minnesota and then continue to track eastward. Now, again, none of these are really expected to be severe through the overnight and morning hours of Wednesday. Uh, right around noon, it kind of tracks across most of northern Minnesota. And then slowly, they move eastward uh, through the afternoon hours. Now, for Wednesday, there is a slight risk of severe across uh, this whole area here. So that's a 1 out of 5 on the rating. Uh, probability of uh, tornadoes, just a 2% chance kind of up and down the northern Red River Valley. Uh, hail, uh, they're saying kind of a 5% chance across uh, eastern Dakotas or North Dakota, northern Minnesota. And then uh, wind kind of throughout the remainder of that uh, kind of a slight risk area. And here you can see on later in the day on Wednesday how there's a whole bunch of uh, higher dew points that kind of make their way into eastern parts of North Dakota, northern um, Minnesota as well. Uh, there's also a, a few little boundaries out there as well. Uh, so what we're going to see here in a bit is that uh, the models really don't pick up so well on these boundaries. They kind of focus in on the mid-level uh, short wave that moves from southwest to northeast. But uh, I think given the uh, high dew points where we're kind of right around 70 possible, uh, along with uh, some high capes values, again, gunpowder in the keg, uh, around 3,500 to 4,000 joules per kilogram, and a little better, stronger southerly winds, south-southwesterly winds at the low level. I think there's the possibility that's kind of where we're focusing in on maybe some severe weather in through here through the late afternoon, uh, early parts of uh, tomorrow or Wednesday evening. And as we Take a look, here's that uh, mid-level wave that uh, begins to move in uh, later in the day here. You can see kind of in southwestern parts of South Dakota, and it begins to move uh, east-northeast throughout the uh, evening hours. Here we are right around 10 p.m. Central Time, and you can see kind of by this point into the eastern parts of South Dakota and North Dakota as well. Now again, the models don't really show uh, much for precipitation in these areas in the eastern Dakotas, northern Minnesota uh, late in the afternoon hours. Uh, but I think there's a possibility that some storms could pop up that we'll just need to bear watching a little bit. Uh, what it does pick up on, of course, is that mid-level wave where it kicks up some storms in southwestern parts of South Dakota. Uh, that's where you might have some strong to maybe some severe storms uh, with some strong winds associated with that. And you can see how these storms continue to move eastward through the overnight hours. Now, they do make it into an area that, again, like we just showed you, higher dew points, higher cape values. So it's possible around that uh, 10 to 11 p.m. time frame that maybe some of these storms could pick up a little bit of a punch uh, once they get into the eastern Dakotas, west central Minnesota. Uh, but then as we get later into the night, um, most of those storms kind of turn more into rain. And then it just kind of turns into more of a rain and scattered thunderstorm event uh, throughout the remainder of the overnight hours and into Thursday morning. You can see how those storms kind of linger into southern parts of Minnesota 
uh, right into the afternoon hours on Thursday. And then for the most part, for the remainder of the day, Thursday is looking pretty good. And as we get into your 4th of July weekend, it's really not going to be too bad overall. Uh, going to be kind of quiet on Friday as you get more into Saturday. Looks like uh, we've got some storms that could develop into eastern parts of the Dakotas and into Minnesota. Quite a bit of humidity sets up in through here uh, through the daytime on Saturday and a couple of boundaries set up. So it's possible that uh, some storms could uh, fire up and some could be strong to severe, not looking at any type of widespread severe event, but uh, again, just uh, something we'll have to watch for later in the day, Saturday uh, into Saturday evening. Uh, once you get into Sunday, uh, we got some storms that develop down into southwestern parts of South Dakota. Again, hail and wind are going to be uh, kind of the, the uh, main threats there. But as you get into the evening hours, they do die off quickly. Now, we do later in the night uh, get a little bit of a, a, a southerly low-level jet that sets up once again. Uh, so we might get some redevelopment late in the night. Uh, but those storms really aren't expected to become severe uh, later into the night into Monday morning. And then for Monday, again, looking pretty good until the overnight hours, Monday night into early Tuesday morning. Looks like we got some storms that want to roll across uh, North Dakota mainly into Tuesday morning. Now, uh, we do have the uh, mid and upper level jet that kind of sits uh, right, kind of cuts right through uh, the heart of our region. Now, what that kind of does is uh, keeps the warm air a little bit further south and some more comfortable cooler air and low humidity type of air a little bit further north. And you can see that here with the temperatures here we are for Friday. These are the highs expected, mainly in the 70s up in the north to 80s and 90s in the south. Uh, once we get into Saturday, more of the same. 70s in the north, maybe even as cool as maybe the upper 60s in the north and then 80s and 90s in the southern parts of the region. Uh, Sunday, more of the same. Uh, 70s, maybe upper 60s in the far, far northern reaches and then down south, 80s and 90s. And for Monday, more of the same. 70s north, 80s and 90s down in the south. Dew points really aren't uh, expected to be too bad on Friday. It's more uh, Saturday. You can see those temperatures or those dew points really begin to increase into the uh, mid-60s into central parts of Minnesota, eastern Dakotas. And that's kind of where we're looking at the possibility of maybe some storms firing up later in the day on Saturday is because of the little warmer temperatures and the high humidities. But uh, once we get into a Sunday, you can see how those dew points really sag south as that uh, that uh, jet stream really just kind of holds thing a little holds. Uh, the warmer temperatures and the higher dew points further south uh, for Sunday and then uh, into Monday as well, holding those uh, higher dew points in the 60s to maybe 70 degrees across the southern parts of our region. So north is actually going to be fairly comfortable. It's going to be the south that's going to be a little warm and sticky uh, throughout the 4th of July weekend. Uh, winds really aren't looking that bad either. Uh, here we're just taking a quick look at the wind gusts. Just uh, some general 25 to 30 mile per hour wind gusts here and there, but uh, all in all, uh, we're not really looking at anything like that, the crazy 40 mile per hour wind gusts that uh, unfortunately we've been getting used to through the uh, winter and now into the parts of the summer as well. So that's what we got kind of going on over the next few days and then a look into your 4th of July weekend. I'm looking to be live probably Thursday evening right around 8 9 p.m. Uh, just to do a little live uh, forecast in case anybody's got any questions, if they're going to be out camping or out in the cabin or whatever they've got going on, lighting off fireworks. Uh, people want to join me, uh, just uh, keep an eye on my page and I will let you know when I'm going to be on Thursday. That way, if you got any questions, you can go ahead and ask them. For Region Weather Live, I am meteorologist Brad Warner. Everybody have a good day.